me record it also. So uh, last time when we uh, discussed about this, then I said that maybe you can create some uh, small schedule for this. So uh, have you? So does anyone has done it? Has anyone did it? So how to create the schedule of this project, uh, which we have something like 17, 18 uh, activities. And how to adjust the schedule. Hmm, okay. So um, probably you will uh, start from the uh, activity as the site survey. I think uh, that's, that may be the uh, starting uh, activity. So after the site survey is uh, completed, then you all, you know, then you have the demarcation for this uh, project. You have the markings and then according to those markings, then you can uh, start the uh, next activity. Okay. So what will be the uh, next activity? Next activity will be the uh, excavation, okay? Excavation, so you will start excavating the uh, project uh, site. So the excavation can be started from one side, okay? So when the excavation of one side has been completed, and for example, in this case, I. Uh, you may also need to estimate how long it will, it will take for the uh, excavation. So in this case, I don't know, maybe uh, you can say that depending on the equipment or the excavator we have, we may be even uh, able to complete uh, an excavation within one day. Uh, who knows, okay, but it depends. Uh, and also whether we, we will need for the excavation uh, any uh, uh, temporary support for the excavation. That also depends on the type of the soil, okay, below the ground level, okay, 875 and the uh, height. 875 plus 250 is about uh, 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 little bit more than one meter. Okay, so what will be the what what does the code say? Whether we need to provide the side supports uh, for this excavation so that the excavation will not fall out. So in this case, uh, assuming that uh, we don't need to provide the supports and the soil is uh, 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 quite stable, maybe a hard uh, hard clay uh, mixed with some sand. So it will, uh, it may, I mean, for up to this much height, about a little bit more than one meter, uh, this uh, soil can stand by its own. Okay. Or, or in order to make uh, the uh, side excavations more stable, you can perform little bit uh, the excavation little bit in the form of the uh, uh, slope as well. Okay. So, but in that case, of course, you will need to do some uh, uh, more excavation. Work will increase. Okay. But it all depends on the working conditions at the site. Uh, and for that purpose, uh, the uh, geotechnical report is uh, also is very important in this case to decide upon whether for the excavation we will need to provide the uh, lateral supports or not. Okay. So excavation will be performed. So excavation may be okay. So for the for the safely speak. Uh, uh, for the safety, maybe you can assume that the whole excavation activity will take like two days. So in the first day, maybe one long side and one small side 
a little bit more of the others long side may be completed and then in the others day the other side will be uh, completed so maybe you can in this case for, for the scheduling purpose you can divide the excavation activity into two smaller activities excavation one and excavation two Regarding for the delivery of the equipment, excavator, compactor, concrete mixer, uh, uh, this uh, yeah, uh, this for example, the excavator should be available before the excavation. Uh, considering that this is uh, this may not be a very long project, so you will assume, you may assume that uh, uh, these uh, uh, equipment uh, may be provided to you as and when needed. So. You may, you may even uh, skip the scheduling for the delivery of this equipment uh, for this project. So you will you will assume that uh, in this case, maybe for the scheduling, you may assume that all the equipment and labors are uh, available as and when needed. So this, although it's a big uh, assumption, and this may not be. True, and then you have to. And for more practical cases, you will also have to schedule for. Uh, you have to. You also have to consider your schedule for these uh, things as well for the delivery of the equipment for the material procurement. But in this case, maybe you can assume that all the material delivery and uh, the personnel, uh, all, all the material equipment and the personnel delivery, is available as and when needed on this. Product so that you can only focus uh, on the uh, activities of this project. Okay, so these are the resources. For example, equipment, procurement, uh, equipment, material, and the personnel are the resources. So we are uh, assuming that the resources are available. Although for more practical cases, we have to uh, provide them. So once the excavation has been done. So which activity uh, can be started? So for example, the excavation for uh, this part has been done. So for example, in the first day, after the first day, excavation for this part has been done. And now this area is available uh, for the next activity. And then in the, uh, on the second day, uh, the excavation for this has been started. But on the second day, this uh, area is available. So what activity can be done on this area? Can you tell me what activity? So after, so, uh, based on the logical relationship, after the excavation, what activity can be performed? Start PCC pouring. Yeah, so the concrete bed, so the, uh, the lowest bed uh, for the concrete pouring, uh, need to be start, uh, need to be started. But here, I think a little practical step over here is that uh, when uh, describing the uh, uh, excavation, when describing the excavation, the uh, description of the activities is also uh, important. Here we have just uh, for the for the very uh, as a summary, we have just written that it is an excavation. However, uh, the project specifications uh, should be uh, more uh, detailed than this uh, just names of the activities. So for example, uh, in those project specifications, uh, excavation activity may also likely include the provision of the uh, lateral support or so forth or, or not, okay, in this case. And also uh, the, after the excavation, the preparation of the surface for the excavation. So for example, once the activity has been excavated, uh, once the soil has been excavated, uh, the specification may also say that the excavated surface, finished surface, uh, should have should be properly compacted. So therefore, after the excavation, maybe some type of pro uh, compaction may be also needed okay, for the excavation. So that can be a separate activity. But for this sake, we assume that the description of the excavation includes that uh, compaction of this finished surface. And though on that finished surface, maybe concrete can be poured, okay? So uh, then uh, logically speaking, then uh, after the excavation, uh, PCC 
uh, pouring can be made okay so pcc pouring will be made in one area and then it can be made in the other area on the uh, third day when the excavation in the part 2 is uh, completed okay so uh, after the concrete pouring uh, has been made uh, then what can be the next activity so if you can see that uh, on the concrete pouring, there is a uh, uh, column footing. Okay, there is this column footing, and on the concrete pouring, there can uh, there is also a, a brickwork as well. So, for example, uh, here you can see that in this uh, elevation uh, elevation view, so you have this uh, PCC port. Uh, bed and then there is uh, this uh, column footing and in between column footing there is the brickwork as well. So logically speaking uh, brickwork and uh, column footing can start uh, simultaneously after the uh, concrete pour okay after pouring of the concrete bed. Is it correct? Hello. <clears throat> so, so what I am saying is that after the uh, pouring of the concrete bed, uh, the brickwork and the uh, um, and the work for the column footing can start simultaneously. Do you agree with that? There is some constraint. Uh, the brickwork should be constructed on top of footing uh, at, the, at the section where they meet. And um, because of this, maybe it would be better to start footing first and then construct the brickwork. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, but, uh, but uh, one, one thing is that uh, we, need to uh, we need to provide proper curing time as well. Uh, for the concrete bed. So therefore that curing time will also be included in the, uh, in, the acti uh, in the activity duration uh, for the concrete putting or in the project schedule that can be put as a lag time as well. So after the concrete has been poured, maybe you will allow it like for like uh, three days or something like that so that it can develop enough strength so that we can put some loads as well. After the concrete pouring, we will uh, have a lag of like three days, okay? And then, okay, so as you have said about the uh, uh, constraints, well, uh, there are actually, uh, logically speaking, uh, logically, uh, there are two types of constraints. One are the resource constraints, or, or maybe, uh, which also include uh, uh, also as the physical constraints as well. Uh, so we can have three types of constraints, uh, resource constraints, uh, physical constraints and the uh, logical constraints. So there is no logical uh, constraint uh, between the these two, uh, between the concrete pouring and the brickwork because the areas are different, okay? So for example, uh, once uh, since the demarcation has been already done, we know the positions. So uh, the brickwork may start in this area, logically speaking, okay? Uh, but practic uh, but you can say that, but from the uh, resource point of view, uh, for this we, need, we may need to consider as well, because if we have uh, uh, different uh, uh, crews for brickwork and for uh, concrete, which is most likely the case for, uh, for the projects, because now the works are more or less uh, specialized, so you will most likely be having different crews for the concrete work and for the brick work as well. And the other thing is that is the physical constraint as well. Physical constraint means the uh, congestion of the work. Okay, uh, that means the if the if we for example if we start both uh, these areas uh, simultaneously, then the work site will become very congested. 
in that case so so considering these physical constraint a uh, uh, physical constraint uh, we may agree that uh, the uh, concrete pores that means the column footing the, the work on the column footing should be completed first so the, the, uh, although there is no logical constraint between them so this therefore after the concrete uh, pouring then the work on the column footings can start okay so this we have considered uh, this we have decided based on the uh, physical constraints uh, there is uh, we are assuming that there are no resource constraints as well because different crews are uh, responsible for the brickwork and the concrete and there are lo no logical constraints but sometimes the logical constraints uh, are now uh, have to be uh, overturned based on the physical constraint so physical constraint means the work site will become very congested if two of the crews are working at the same site because the distance is about uh, just 2.5 meter it's about less than 10 feet so uh, the site will become very congested so it means that so first first we will complete these columns and then we will start work uh, on the uh, brickwork so okay so we, since now we have decided about the uh, where is this yeah here since now we have decided about the uh, about the uh, after pcc pouring so footing work will be started so in the footing work uh, what type of work will be performed first reinforcement works mm -hmm. yeah so we have uh, we, uh, the footing work will complete with the reinforcement work and form work and the concrete so uh, well the normal practice is that uh, first uh, you place the uh, form work okay uh, and then you place the uh, reinforcement but uh, but it may also interchange as well for example if the site is very congested so where it, it will become uh, difficult once you place the form work in the uh, area uh, then you can uh, uh, place the uh, once you pl place the reinforcement in the area then you can place the form work so in this case uh, uh, it can be uh, done uh, like uh, what you can say is that you can place the form work first. Okay, sorry, you can place the reinforcement for the uh, footing first. Okay, and then uh, you can place the reinforcement uh, for the column and the uh, joint uh, joint of the column and the footing. Okay, all three areas uh, together. Okay, joint of the all three areas together. So in this case, uh, for example, the reinforcement for this uh, footing in both directions, okay, lateral and then the transverse both directions, and then the reinforcement for the columns, okay, and uh, uh, with their appropriate uh, uh, embedment into the footing. So for those reinforcements to be placed over here, so a parallel work on the uh, preparation of these reinforcements has also to be started. So therefore, in this case, you will assume that uh, all the uh, reinforcements will be available in the form of uh, these uh, kind of like cages uh, for the columns and for the footings. These will be available. Otherwise, you have to schedule their work as well. Uh, before starting the uh, excavation as well, okay, before starting the excavation. So uh, many of the subsidiary or supporting works have to be uh, scheduled, okay. So when you uh, consider it practically speaking, uh, when you consider it uh, practically, so many of the uh, supporting works have to be scheduled as well. So in this case, again, we are assuming that the uh, uh, the, these cages for the uh, uh, column reinforcement and then uh, the network of these uh, steel bars for the footings are available. 
So therefore, now we are scheduled and then we are going to place these uh, steel bars and then the form work for this. So it will be better if you place the steel, uh, steel bar for the uh, uh, footing first and then provide the lateral supports, lateral supports. So these lateral supports should be provided on uh, four sides, this side, this side, this side, and then four sides. So four sides lateral support will be provided uh, for the, uh, as a form work for the footing. Okay, and at the same time, uh, the uh, reinforcement for the columns must be placed to at least uh, say, for example, like, uh, I don't, it is, it will be better that you, you provide all the uh, foot, uh, all the reinforcement up to the top of the uh, column, okay, up to the top of the column, but then there will be a, a problem for uh, place uh, for supporting these uh, uh, reinforcements uh, vertically, okay. So at the same time, then uh, form work for this have to be provided over here. So for example, now, now in this case, uh, what is going to happen is that you will place these uh, reinforcement for the footing and the column for the whole section. And then you will place the form work. So form work will include four sides of the footing. Uh, form work will also include four sides of the uh, column. And then uh, these form works have to be uh, fixed. Of course, for form, uh, form work uh, now, nowadays, the steel form works is provided. And these steel form work ha uh, has, the, has their own uh, supports uh, to be placed on the site and uh, then that form work can be placed. So once that, once the form work for both the for, uh, footing and the column has been placed, and then the, what will be the next activity? Pouring the concrete. Yeah, so pouring of the concrete for both the column and the uh, footing. So. First, the concrete can be placed into the uh, footing. So for, for example, in uh, uh, this, uh, the, from this open area, okay, the, uh, uh, the column can be, uh, sorry, the concrete can be placed. And then from the top of the column, the concrete can be poured into the, into the column as well. And then, of course, uh, uh, the, the concreting staff, uh, they, uh, the con concreting crew will have their uh, will have their uh, concrete compactors as well in the form of some probes which provide the uh, vibrations to the concrete so that the concrete is properly uh, compacted. So in this way, work will continue uh, one column after the other, one column after the other. Okay. So depending on this activity, I mean, depending on the uh, productivity of the workforce, it will take maybe one day, I don't know, maybe it's not like one, one day's job, it may like maybe take two or three days, something like this, to uh, complete this uh, project, okay? So the as a construction manager, then you can decide that, okay, for example, once they complete uh, the work in this site and then plus there is a lag because again a, a concrete is uh, involved over here so you have to provide a lag for the curing of the concrete maybe three days or whatever uh, then after that lag then the brick work can be uh, started okay so the can i ask a question here yes uh in uh, in the third slide uh, it says that clear opening is five meters. Uh, uh, slide number. Yes, slide number three. One, two, three. Here. Uh, oh, uh, previous slide. Here. Yes, uh, it says that clear length of opening is five meters. Oh yes. Uh, yes. Is this uh, center to center distance between columns or? 
uh, uh, it's not the center. Uh, it's the clear. When we talk about the clear length, it the clear length is always from the surface. Surface. It seems like uh, then uh, we should place some of the uh, one pair of cones uh, at a distance less than 2.5 meters. Uh, all the other distances are given as center to center distances. Uh, oh, so there, there may be some uh, discrepancy in this case. Yeah, in this case, yeah. So in this case, uh, yeah, maybe one of the column can be adjusted, but uh, this five meter, uh, uh, five meter uh, clearance should be placed because that may be for some working reason. So, for example, if we will change this, like it will make like 4.8 meter or something like this, then later on there may be a problem. For example, if this. Uh, some gate has to be provided and that and that gate is for standard length of five meter so then there will be some problem so in this case you can adjust uh, that 2.5 meter to same something like more uh, even value so 2.4 meter something like this okay so it will be mm. like as a construction engineer you may uh, make such a decision so, so you so for uh, so what you can do is you can uh, maybe i think it will be better in this case uh, whatever will be the discrepancy, maybe you can create that discrepancy in one pair of columns and then keep all other columns as 2.5 meter. So that may be the more practical uh, solution. Okay, thank you. Yeah. <clears throat> so, so th therefore, uh, the main thing is that this five meter clearance uh, should should not be altered because that will be something which will be uh, needed later on. But if you create some discrepancy over here, that, that will be something that will not cause much problem uh, to us. Okay, and uh, uh, then, yeah, so the clearance. Uh, so, so after the concrete pouring has been made and proper curing has been provided, so this uh, brickwork uh, can be started, okay? So this brickwork can be started. So starting from the concrete pouring and then brickwork can be completed. So and there is no problem of the uh, scheduling for the brickwork. So, but the only thing is that uh, proper uh, lag have to be uh, given for the concrete pouring area. So in this case, uh, the work area can be divided uh, into different areas. And I think when you create this, when you will create the schedule, you may look at various uh, scenarios, okay? Uh, because uh, you may, uh, you um, in, considering different scenarios and all, uh, considering different scenarios, you will have the different project uh, duration. And you may like to complete the project uh, um, in, the, in the shorter time. So then you will consider that scenario, which is practical, which will be practical. And then which will also give you the the shortest pro uh, project uh, duration. So now there is one more consideration over here is that, uh, for example, you have started the concrete pouring. So when you when you are uh, creating the uh, when you are pouring the concrete, at the same time you can you you also need to uh, schedule uh, the uh, placement of these uh, uh, structural steel angles as well. Because later you later on you cannot place those angles. If, for example, if the if you have poured the, uh, poured the concrete over here and the concrete has become hardened, then that area have to be uh, you cannot just uh, drive this concrete column. Uh, you cannot drive that concrete angle into that column. So this concrete angle, uh, sorry, this steel angle, uh, this structural steel angle have to be uh, placed at the time of pouring of the concrete when the concrete is still uh, fresh. So therefore, uh, pouring of the steel angle have to be scheduled with the pouring of the concrete column. So it, it means that uh, in, in your schedule, uh, the pouring of the concrete for the columns may, um, uh, uh, may be uh, simultaneously with the pouring of the concrete columns, uh, pouring of the, sorry, placement of the uh, steel angles. Okay. Uh, so uh, with this, uh, then, uh, so 
you have now considered the steel angle as well. And now what we can do is, uh, now there are some other works, some other works which have been left. So for example, uh, we have already excavated it. And then <coughs> for, uh, when, uh, work, uh, when doing the actual works, so you will see that uh, once the, for example, in this area, for example, in this area, uh, a concrete has been poured, uh, columns have also been poured, and the brickwork has also been uh, completed to at least the ground level. And if this area, if, if this area is clear enough over here, then what you can do is you can backfill that area up at, to the ground level because, uh, yeah, so the, you have to provide the backfill of backfilling of that area. So that means once the work has been completed up to the ground level, so backfilling work can be uh, started, okay? And once the brickwork has been completed, then the uh, plastering work can be, can be also uh, started. But remember that for the plastering work, you have to create the plaster 100 millimeter below the ground level as well. So in this case, if the uh, backfilling has been done, so maybe what you can do is you can place small area over here uh, in the form of uh, like a triangular show form to uh, for the plastering to be completed 100 millimeter below the uh, ground uh, ground level and similarly on the other side in the inner side as well. Okay, so that then the remaining part of the back filling can be done <coughs> later on after that plaster is <coughs> completed. So uh, the plastering will follow later on. And once, uh, and once the brickwork is completed, so it will be then clear uh, that uh, we can install the barbed wires as well, okay? Barbed wires as well, uh, barbed wires as well. So I think in this way, we have completed all the, com um, all the important activities. Another activity is maybe that uh, is the uh, site clearance. So the site clearance uh, may also involve uh, the extra soil which was excavated. So you know that, you see that uh, we have excavated some soil, but we have to replace that soil, we have placed the concrete and bricks inside of the uh, foundation as well. So this means that the remaining soil uh, which, uh, which will be already there, so that soil have to be transported away from the site or can it has, it has to be disposed of or it may be used for some other purpose as well. So site clearance work may also uh, involve this. So uh, scaffolding normally we don't include uh, into the uh, scheduling. Uh, this is only the practical consideration, but scaffolding is a part of the uh, brickwork as well. Okay, so the, dis the description of the brickwork uh, may include the uh, scheduling work as well. Okay. So do you have any questions about this? Okay, so since I have not heard any questions, so that means everything is clear. And uh, mm, okay, so then I think it's enough about this exercise. I think uh, uh, this assignment, I mean, the assignment which I have given to you does not include that scheduling part. So the scheduling part is only for the discussion. And I, in fact, I have recorded it. So you may also even uh, consult that later on from the recording. So the assignment is only the uh, uh, estimating, okay? So I think in a few days, the assignment deadline is coming. So I hope that you can uh, do it. Uh, uh, remember that in the, uh, uh, in the excavation part, although it is uh, not necessary, uh, you can, uh, sorry, in the, uh, in the, sorry, not for the excavation, in for, for all types of estimating, Although it is not very, uh, it's not necessary. You can estimate what by whatever method which you consider. Uh, but the no, uh, but the normal practice for the uh, for the estimating is that uh, 
<clears throat> estimating is done actually for the whole part first and then from that whole part some some of the deductions are uh, placed so for example for the excavation part over here what you will consider it is that you will you are going to excavate it as if there is no opening over here okay once you find the excavation uh, um, amount for that uh, uh, part then you will deduct that opening area from here, from there and then you can find the final answer for the excavation so this is a, a normal uh, practice uh, for the estimators so they uh, they calculate the whole part first and then they make the deductions in this case so this is the normal practice but alternatively what you can do is you can estimate starting from here up to there and then that's also that is also okay but uh, this is not generally the uh, normal uh, practice so the professional estimators always uh, do like this that means they calculate uh, the whole area and then they make the deductions uh, any a question about the assignment i have a question uh, yes uh, for backfill calculation can we just uh, calculate for example first excavation then um, uh, concrete amount and brick amount underground then for backfill just subtract these values yeah this is the uh, this is the normal practice yeah okay thanks that i have just said that so uh, first full amount and minus the deduction Okay, so that's uh, that is for this assignment, and then I think uh, there is another uh, assignment over here. Uh, let me share with you. Mm. Now, where is this file? There is, uh, yeah, here. Okay, so this uh, computer. So I I know that you have already submitted the first part of that, and then I will mark it later on. Uh, so for this other part, I think you have to do uh, these steps uh, given over here. But uh, uh, I think uh, within one or two days, I will also, uh, I will, uh, yeah, here you will see that uh, a lot of uh, steps uh, have been mentioned. So for example, well, here we have only the cost and uh, scheduling data. Uh, so. For example, it says here. Mm -hmm. Where is this? This is just the description, general guidelines, and uh, it starts from here. Okay, yeah. So, for example, different tasks, uh, something like this. So it it mentions something many different tasks, but I I think uh, uh, I will. I will uh, make an uh, uh, make a modification in this part, and I will tell you what specific tasks which I need. Okay, from you. So from here, and also from here, and then the other one. Okay, I will uh, I will make it more clear because if you will follow everything like this over here, it will be sometimes very uh, confusing. Okay. So I will uh, I will give you some supplementary information regarding this part of the assignment. So that that part of the assignment is the uh, uh, planning and scheduling actually. So that planning and scheduling you will do in the in this program. This program, Microsoft, uh, no, not Microsoft. This is the uh, Primavera Project uh, Planner. So have you installed this program yet? Yes, yes I did. okay and then i have uh, also provided a tutorial as well uh, it is about 55 page uh, tutorial and uh, hopefully that tutorial many uh, covers many other things although that tutorial uh, was prepared for a uh, older version of the primavera 
but uh, I think it still holds most of the things which is which are there in this uh, version. So based on that, uh, then you can uh, follow along and then uh, you can complete the uh, assignment. So any uh, any question about the assignment? Uh, 